You guys want to know what the most frustrating thing in the world has to be, hands down, is when you film a 15-ish minute long video and the mic was not picking up any of the audio. So, welcome to round two, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about what's going on with AMC stock today. Short interest, up about 1.5%, which, take that in for a second, 25% short interest. Now to over 26.5% short interest. You're getting closer to that 30% threshold. The higher this baby goes, heading into April 27th, the more bullish I have to be on AMC. Now, that might not be the most bullish thing on the day because you're back on the threshold securities list. So, work is cut out for us here in this video. That is the tip of the iceberg on what will be discussed here in this video. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done that. And if you guys want to trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. So first things first, with AMC stock, AMC is up 4.68% at the time of recording this video. It's another very strong day for AMC. And this whole week has been... Uh, very strong for AMC in general. On Monday, you were up 7%. On Tuesday, you were up 3.63%. Yesterday, down 1.66%. And today, up almost 5% again. So, it's been a pretty good streak here. And even the week before that was obviously very bullish as well. And this comes because the judge denied the settlement. Now, this, le this sole factor right here leads me to believe... April 27th, it's not going to be as bearish as people expect. I don't expect AMC to get a green light to do their initiatives, at least on April 27th. I think there's another court date. I think there's something else, a different card that's going to be placed than the markets expect, and that is bullish for AMC. And the higher the short interest goes, higher the cost of borrow rates go, the more thresholds, uh, you know, failure to delivers we see, the longer AMC stays on the threshold securities list. All of these things should be bullish uh, after April 27th. Now, on that note, let's first off talk about what has happened so far in the markets today. Now, you got PPI today. Came in much better than expectations. You were actually expecting a flat PPI to come in at 0%. Literally not changed month over month. Well, it came in in negative territory. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at what it says. It says U.S. wholesale prices sank a half percent, 0.5 percent in March to mark the biggest decline in almost three years, potentially a sign of further easing in inflation in the months ahead. Now, you know, CPI, right? And let's break this down. Super simple. So everyone will you'll always know what PPI is compared to CPI. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. PPI stands for Producer Price Index. Consumers obviously with cpi that is you and me the general public just people in general consumers prices you are paying for goods consumers producers would be your businesses people that are producing the products how is their inflation doing the less inflation they see in theory the less inflation you should see and that's why this was such a positive development uh here on the day and it, it, it does go on to say that economists polled by Wall Street Journal had forecast no change in the producer price index. So it was a sharp drop. Now, let me be the first to explain to you guys. Inflation is not the number one concern for our markets. The number one concern will shortly be earnings. But going hand in hand with earnings, it's economic activity. So you're seeing inflation going down, at least on headline inflation yesterday dropping from six percent in the previous month to five percent uh in well from february to march dropping from six percent to five percent now you're seeing ppi going into deflationary territory a negative half percent on 12 month basis that's like five and a half percent deflation on a on a year over year uh, cumulative basis now why is inflation going down like this? That's the number one thing. Is it going down because economic activity is also going down? That's going to be the big thing for markets. And you're going to get some data coming out tomorrow 
that will paint a better picture of what is going on. Now, the best case scenario is inflation is going down as economic data remains strong. That's where you're going to get your soft landing narrative that starts to look a little bit more likely and investors can fundamentally get a little bit more bullish on this market. Now, let's take a look because you're expecting retail sales to come out tomorrow morning, 8.30 in the morning at a negative 0.9%. Last month's reading was negative 4%. So you're expecting retail sales to get worse month over month. Now, I don't think this number alone, almost negative 1%, is going to cause a huge sell-off. But I do think it has the potential to come in lower than than this this number i think uh two to three percent drop in retail sales is kind of likely from here even you've seen warren buffett he was saying he was getting reports from his businesses over the last couple of months here and a lot of them a lot of retail companies are experiencing drops of 20 25 percent in their actual sales numbers he said quote even worse than that in profit margins so Based off of little signs you get here and there, kind of what I see personally in the economy, I think retail retail sales might drop more than that, and that would be bad because inflation is if inflation is going down because people are just not spending as much money, that's not a good thing. And we're gonna know, at least have a better picture coming tomorrow morning, as well as that you are going to get uh bank earnings that come out tomorrow morning as well as the michigan consumer sentiment survey uh and this is obviously michigan consumer sentiment so how the consumer is feeling about the economy but you're also going to get inflation expectations as well and this is like a 65 year long survey now and it tends to pretty well for forecast uh recessions and just economic slowdowns right so that will be important as well now in regards to AMC, let's talk about what is going on with our favorite trade here today. AMC stock is up about 5% at the time of recording this video, sitting at $5.60 per share. We did not close above the 100-day moving average yesterday. After seeing a very strong day, you did close down 1.66% on the day with volume of about 33 and a half million shares now that 100 day moving average sits at five dollars 54 cents per share yesterday you close at five dollars 34 cents per share now you're back above that 100 day moving average by about eight cents right now so i i would love to see a close today above this 100 day moving average if we don't get that i would love to see a close above the 100 day moving average coming tomorrow now the last thing I want to point out before we get into the FCD numbers, the threshold securities list, cost to borrow, short interest, all of that on AMC, is briefly talk about bank earnings tomorrow. Because on one hand, the markets didn't really care about bank earnings because the overwhelming thesis was the Fed was going to uh, pause or they're going to pause soon or they're not going to raise rates as much as we expect because of the bank earnings or, or because of the banking crisis now if banks come out and they reiterate that banking crisis is over there is no banking crisis things are fine here credit standards credit tightening it's a big word you're going to hear tomorrow is not really happening that means banks are still you know lending out money just fine it's not a problem well the markets might actually take that very negative because the markets might say, hey, we've been pricing in Fed cuts and uh, a pause here because of this banking crisis. No banking crisis, no pause. That don't sound good for equity. So that's the one thing that I want to put in there. If banks do have positive reactions off of their earnings tomorrow and they have good things to say, it might actually be a negative thing for uh, the markets, which just goes to show how weird this market environment currently is now let's switch gears let's get into the data behind amc stock so like i said in the beginning of this video amc stock is now on the threshold securities list a quick catch up for anyone that does not know or remember what the threshold securities list is it's essentially where parties right if you buy it usually happens in, in, in options and it can pretty good indicator of naked shorting as well uh but usually happens in options 
not you're not necessarily allowed to say there's just a bunch of naked shorting going on without proof uh but nonetheless it's when one side of a transaction on either side fails to deliver fails to oblige for their end of their obligations right so a lot of the times it can be naked shorts because every time you get a naked short there's only one party involved you're going to fail on one side of that transaction 100% of the time and that's where a lot of people point you know put two and two together and and say all FTDs are naked shorts i don't think that's the case i think there's a likely always a good mix in failure to deliver numbers even though naked shorting is highly illegal uh market makers former uh hedge fund employees will tell you that it it, it does happen and does happen more frequently than that that you know authorities would would like you to know now when you get on the th this threshold securities list it's because these transactions have not closed within a five-day period and after that you get it's called t plus 35 right settlement time so you can get up to 35 trading days to cover on these positions and to close out of these positions uh if not then you really start to get investigated quite closely so nobody wants to go over 35 days that that really doesn't happen um all too often and the best way that i really look about the threshold securities list is one it gets the stock a little bit more attention it shows maybe there's a lot of shorts uh in this trade regardless right uh, i think those are uh important but on top of that i i think you get a lot more support and i think a rally if you're in a rally uh can hold a lot more weight if you're on the threshold securities list because after all you know guaranteed buying is coming in 35 days at the very least and usually when amc is on the threshold securities list the stock does like to rally last time that happened was uh you know this rally right here from four dollars to nine dollars you were on the threshold securities list this whole entire time this whole period right here seeing three really pop off top kind of days uh and and then you obviously left the list and you started to fall heading into march 14th and then the rest is history now if we take a look at the ftd numbers that we are currently seeing it looks like for today you're getting about 1.8 million ftds uh for tomorrow you're looking at about 2 million ftds now these are closeout dates so as more days continue to go by you will get uh, more updates from these ftd numbers and you're probably going to see these ramp up quite a bit uh because i mean look at the white bars right here these are the ftd numbers you were just very high and if if you do double dip on ftds it tends to be larger the second time around uh and that really wouldn't surprise me heading into april 27th the court date for amc as even the option activity has been so bearish and if you take a look at the option activity for april 28th it's no surprise or at least it shouldn't be a surprise that the calls open interest is now sitting at about 19 and a half percent on monday this was sitting at 9.77 percent so every single green day that we have seen has has been accompanied by the open interest on the call side for april 28th going higher right you're you're getting more of the percent of options in calls for april 28th every green day that we see but don't be fooled i mean for every two calls placed on april 28th there is eight puts being placed so it's still very negative but i do think as we get closer this number will start to go higher and that will continue to uh give us these green days now another story that is happening today is the short interest so you're seeing that jump up by about one and a half percent now sitting at 26 and a half percent with 136.38 million shares that are currently sold short cost of our average of 385.66 percent cost of our max at 516 percent cost of our minimum at 354 percent and interactive brokers has the cost of our rate for amc at about 417.84 percent with about 250,000 shares that are currently available uh, to be lent out so some pretty extreme numbers we're seeing over here and i think this just means we're going to be more bullish and get a bigger reaction after april 27th the higher these numbers go uh the the more bullish i have to be 
for this upcoming court date. I don't think it's as clean cut as basically everyone else does. So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. If you guys also want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video, like I said earlier. But most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.